am neutral to negative on Bitcoin. I still have a long on Bitcoin uh, in my in verified investing crypto. But if it gets above 25, I'm exiting that long and probably shorting Bitcoin. I have a short signal on Ethereum, a short signal on uh, Solana, a uh, short signal on Avalanche. We're in the money on all of those at this point. Gareth has given investors major tops and bottoms on the stock market, gold, silver, and cryptocurrency. One recent example includes his phenomenal early prediction of Bitcoin's 2022 sudden drop below $20,000. Against popular opinion, he held his ground and helped investors around the globe avoid major losses. Bitcoin jumped $700, moving above $23,600, as Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell suggested the U.S. Central Bank is seeing signs of waning inflation. Jerome Powell said he doesn't expect the Fed to cut rates this year, as some major strategists project. The Fed hopes it can continue nudging inflation lower to its 2% target without triggering a deep recession or causing a substantial rise in the unemployment rate from the current 3.5%, a level rarely seen in recent decades. Inflation, based on the Fed's preferred measure, slowed to a 5% annual rate in December. If we do see inflation coming down much more quickly, that will play into our policy setting, of course. Before going further in this video, let's take a minute and hit that subscribe button. As market was waiting for Fed decision, which was going to announce on 1st February, Gareth Soloway predict Fed moves few minutes before Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell meeting. Let's take a look onto Gareth prediction. The only thing on Bitcoin I'm focused on here is that we're going to be watching this level, 22,340. If we break below that, that would be a negative. You'd have to think that we're going to go test this level. That's your lowest point of the consolidation, two candle consolidation low point. That is where the line in the sand is for Bitcoin. As long as you stay above that, technically speaking, you could continue heading higher to 25,000. Okay, really a little bit above 25,000. Look for the market reaction. One of the things I stress to my traders is that you don't have to, you, you don't have to know what the decision is. All you care about is the price action. And what I mean by that is if we go back to the spiders chart here, is that the price action is going to tell you how the market is taking it. Were they hawkish or were they dovish, right? And if they're hawkish, the markets are going to sell. If they're dovish, the markets are going to rally. You know, whatever they say is somewhat inconsequential at that point in time. All right. So again, let's watch and see how things go. Right now, the S&P is trading down just. Prior to Powell speaking, the Federal Open Market Committee, as expected, lifted its benchmark interest rate by 25 basis points to a new range of 4.5% to 4.75%, the highest level in 15 years. In its policy statement, the central bank said ongoing increases in borrowing costs will be necessary to further cool inflation. Data from the CME Group now shows investors pricing in an 86% chance of another 25 basis point rate hike to a range of 4.75% to 5% at the FOMC's March meeting. At his press conference, Powell led off in a hawkish fashion, reminding reporters of the destructive nature of inflation and promising the Fed's commitment to bringing inflation down to the 2% target. The yield on the two-year Treasury note, the maturity most sensitive to Fed policy expectations, dropped abruptly to the day's low, last trading down about eight basis points at around 4.12%. According to known market and investment strategist, Fed Reserve hikes by 0.25%. Its eighth hike, the Fed did not indicate it's at the end of its hiking cycle. But Fed Chair said in his speech he sees inflation coming down soon. 50% of inflation is in disinflationary phase. Markets react positively. Take a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin popping, interesting, initially dropped, and now look at the pop you're getting on Bitcoin intraday. Not a big pop, but a little bit of an uptick here. Let's go back to the daily chart. Remember, on the daily chart, the only thing on Bitcoin that matters is this area right up here. Let me put a line in right here, okay? Bear with me here. That line right there, that's the line we want to follow. So as long as Bitcoin's between these two levels, there's nothing new here to report. It is what it is. Pretty minor. Markets are starting to sell again. Let's go back to the spiders. Flipping back through the spiders here. Going to the 10-minute chart, we're starting to come down. Watch this trend line down here. Again, right around 403.20. Thank you, Studo Crypto. Pseudo Crypto, appreciate that. So again, 0.25, uh, 0.25 basis points or 25 basis points. Let's take a look at Tesla real quick. Spiders are coming down to that level. Markets are starting to sell a little bit more here. We're seeing pretty much all assets coming in a little bit. Nothing crazy. Even Tesla is not selling much on the 10-minute chart. Daily chart remains somewhat extended. 
right up into this 175, 180 resistance line. If it breaks through that, you're going to go to 200. Let's go back to the dollar. What's the US dollar doing? Yeah, look at this. So see how the dollar popped and is popping up? That's pushing the markets down. So again, remember dollar up, asset prices down and dollars popping right here. Look at this little pop right here coming in. And so if we flip back to the spiders, my charts are even lagging. You can see the red corresponding candle. Always remember that right now markets trade inverse to the dollar, the US dollar, inverse to the US dollar, all right? But again, as long as we don't take out this blue line on a closing candle basis, honestly, so far, it's nice price action whipping, but it's not anything to write home about. A lack of clarity on future interest rate moves signals the Fed is nearing the end of his rate tightening cycle, Ripley said. After hikes end, he said the central bank will likely sit tight while the economic data catches up to the policy. The Fed is essentially speaking out of both sides of the mouth as they signaled further increases are appropriate, but also acknowledged they will consider the cumulative amount of tightening in future policy decisions. The price of Bitcoin broke through the $24,000 ceiling and the total crypto market cap jumped nearly 4% after United States Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell indicated that inflation had begun slowing down in the world's largest economy. The rate hike in Powell's remarks appeared to have gone down well in the crypto markets, which have been trading sideways in the lead up to the speech, but saw market cap increase by over $40 billion in the hours after the announcement. Meanwhile, Bitcoin tipped slightly over $24,000 for the first time in 2023, reaching $24,161.27, according to CoinMarketCap. And I say, okay, so, so far this is a non-event. Now the question is, once Powell starts talking in his press conference, does he say something that freaks the market out or causes a rally, right? I think that's the bigger question here. So right now, I mean, look at this. We basically haven't moved since the previous candle when all is said and done. Now, again, that could change. Let's keep an eye on the dollar. I want to go back to Bitcoin. Bitcoin was popping up, came right back in. Now it's starting to sell a little bit. But again, same thing on Bitcoin. Go back to your daily Bitcoin chart. The only thing that matters, 22,340 and this high here, 23,840. So there's basically a 500 point differential here on Bitcoin. That's what, you're, that's what you're looking at. The decision at the conclusion of the Federal Open Market Committee's first meeting of 2023 comes after months of jumbo size rate increases intended to cool the economy and marks the return to a more traditional interest rate policy. And while Fed officials are slowing rate hikes after months of unusually aggressive action, the central bank is far from declaring victory. U.S. markets jumped following the press conference, indicating the investors expect a more dovish Fed going forward. The S&P 500 closed the first day of February 1.1% higher after notching its best January in four years. What are your thoughts about Fed recent decision? Let us know in the comment section below. If you like our content, give this video a big thumbs up and do subscribe to our channel. See you in the next one.